Right, so my first ever video, which feels a little bit odd. Um, my name is Tom Bartley. I am a portrait, fashion and event photographer mainly. I do all sorts, but those are my main three things. And yeah, I'm going to do a Q&A video. I've always wanted to give doing videos a go. So I thought a Q&A video was a good way to get started. Obviously, Instagram implemented its question feature a few weeks ago, and since then I've enjoyed um, answering questions from people who follow me. So a few days ago, I asked those people to throw me some questions that I would answer in a video, so I'm gonna give that a crack. So here we go, YouTuber fast cut thing. Right, so first question comes from TV Trev. He asks me, why did you start the Instax wall? Does it have a name? Is it running out of space? So first up, no, it doesn't have a name. And secondly, if you have no idea what TV Trev is talking about, the Instax wall is this thing next to me. It used to be up on my wall, but I've gone a little bit more upmarket and I've put it in a frame from Ikea. So it's basically just a bunch of Instaxes that I've shot on photo shoots and that's just the start of it. I mean, I have a whole bag full of more Instaxes here. So why did it start? So I used to work for Google um, two or three years ago um, and we had an Instax camera there we used in the office to photograph people who came in. And I thought, oh, this is cool. I'm gonna grab one of these. And since then, I've just used it on photo shoots, um, mainly photo shoots here in this room, um, mainly underwear and lingerie kind of photo shoots because I feel like the aesthetic suits that the most. And it's just fun to take some quick photos there and then on the day, which have that certain kind of like, you know, film, Polaroid aesthetic. And it's also um, really useful to have them to like share on Instagram stories and things like that. So, I mean, I really like them. I think that Instax uh, is, is a lot of fun and it's the perfect kind of like present. Um, if you have like a mom or a dad or a partner or a brother or a sister or whatever, who are asking what to get you for Christmas or your birthday and you can't ask for camera equipment because like lenses cost a fortune or whatever. Um, the Instax is a good shit. Like you can pick up the Instax wide. I mean, I have the old version, but you can get one of these for around a hundred pounds. I think the Instax mini, which is the same kind of thing with smaller pictures is around 50, 60 pounds and the shots are like 50p each. So if you're looking for something that's not too expensive, it's a lot of fun, regardless of whether you're a professional photographer or you just want to take some photos of your friends on nights out or you know family members or whatever, um, I couldn't recommend the Instax uh, system enough. So the next question comes from Max.Photo and he asks, what's your go-to camera and lens? Well, I can't show you the camera because I'm using it to film this video, but it is the Sony a7R 2 I switched over from Nikon DSLRs about a year ago and I have zero complaints whatsoever. I love this camera. It's small, it's fast, it's film capability is fantastic, which is the reason I switched in the first place because I needed a camera that could do photography and film. And this does a great job of both. Its um, eye autofocus system is brilliant for portrait photographers. It basically locks onto the eye. Like you imagine like Top Gun, you know, when like, they get a missile lock on a plane. It's like that, but just with a camera and a human's eye. Um, and it's really consistent and really sharp. It has a silent shooting mode, which is truly silent, which is very, very useful for me when I'm shooting quiet events like book readings or poetry performances. Its electronic viewfinder is amazing. I never used to be a fan of electronic viewfinders. I used to own, I think, a Fuji X Pro one something like that and I thought the EVF was slow and terrible and really low definition but they've come a long way it's really really good um, I have no complaints fantastic camera my go-to lens to pair with that camera is this the Sony Zeiss 55 mm 1.8 absolute boss lens like this thing is like tack sharp super fast fantastic bit of kit like everything to do with Sony, it's expensive. It's around 600 to 700 pounds for this lens, which when you compare that to the Nikon and Canon um, 50 mm 1.8s, they're around 150, 200 pounds. So this is three times more, but it's not really in the same league. This is like a pro level lens. It's fantastic. I'm not gonna get into the technical details on chromatic aberration and all that, because who cares? Um, it's ace, like this is my go-to. I use this combination 90% of the time for portraiture. Like it is a top 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 combo um yeah so the sony a7r2 and the 55 millimeter 1.8 a port branded asks me what's your biggest pet peeve when shooting model reliability i don't even need to think about it model reliability is by far the biggest pet peeve i mean it's not even a pet peeve yeah like if it was a pet it'd be like a dire wolf like a giant freaking pet because it drives me up the wall yeah 
like model reliability that goes from like cancellations to not turning up to just poor communication like setting up a photo shoot isn't hard yeah you literally go do you want to shoot yes cool what do you want to do i like this i like this let's make a mood board let's pick a day and a time and let's shoot simple but it never feels simple because like for the most part people are just terrible at communicating take ages to get back to you like I wish I could say it was a few people who were like this, but in general, it's very common. Like, it's it's nearly most of the time I deal with models. It's a bit of a nightmare to get a shoot going. And it just kind of, like, saps the fun out of it. And I think a lot of the time, and I'm sure that photographers are like this as well. I'm not one of them. I, I'm very professional in the way I set up shoots and I communicate quickly. But in general, if you're working in this creative space, especially if you're a model, and you get frustrated that people don't take your career seriously, well, be serious, treat it as a profession, like do your job properly. It's not just about being pretty and having a nice portfolio. Like, I can't over, over emphasize how important reliability is as a model. Like if I have a job with a client and I need to hire a model, the number one thing I need to be sure on is reliability. It doesn't matter how hot you are, it doesn't matter how good your portfolio is, it doesn't matter how many followers you've got. If, you, if I can't 100% rely on you to turn up to a shoot when I've got a client with me, I can't hire you. So if, if I've heard even the slightest rumor that you're unreliable, you, 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 you're gone, like I'm not using you, like, I can't use you. Like it's so important, be reliable, communicate well. Word spreads, if you're a nightmare or if you're just hard to work with, that gets around. So my biggest pet peeve is that, model reliability and model professionalism. You know, I'm a professional, I want to do a professional job, I want to work with professionals. I haven't got time for acting around with people just giving me nonsense. So that is by far my biggest pet peeve. M.Elt asks me, how did you get into photography? Did you have another career before? So yeah, I mean, I went to university but I studied law. Um, I didn't even pick up a camera until I was 23. And my last full-time job before I quit and became a uh, full-time photographer and uh, videographer was working for Google. Um, and it was never a plan. I wish I could tell you, but like I sat down one day and I thought, oh, I'm gonna be a photographer. But I never did, like, I never cared about photography when I was growing up. I started doing it for fun when I was 23. And then just over time, I just started getting more and more and more jobs until it got to the point where it was like, okay, well, it makes sense to just go be a photographer now, which is what I did. But I never sat down and like aimed for it to be my career. I just, it just kind of went that way in the end. Um, and I kind of recommend that to a lot of people. I think a lot of people think, with being a photographer or just being a freelancer in general, that you just like quit your job one day and become a photographer. I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, it's a bit dangerous. So what I would do is I'd carry on doing your job and try and pick up little freelance gigs here and there and do both at the same time. And then eventually, hopefully, you'll get to the point where you can safely leave your full-time employment and become a full-time freelancer. Um, so yeah, go for that soft transition. That would be my best bit of advice with regards to you know going into a career in any kind of creative freelancing. So Matt Sheehan asks me, and he's a great photographer by the way, you should check him out. How do you find Sony native lenses thinking about making the switch? So I think that Sony native glass is absolutely fantastic. To give some context, I would assume that Matt is shooting on Sony but using old Canon lenses with an adapter. That's fine, I've heard that works effectively, but at the end of the day, if you've moved over to Sony, it's likely you're gonna be using this system for a while. And I would get rid of your old glass and just jump headfirst into the Sony system because the Sony glass is superb. It's expensive, that's the main downside to it. But if you wanna invest into it, it's brilliant. Like I've never used a bit bad piece of Sony glass. Everyone I've spoke to seems to love them. But the most important reason why I recommend using native glass and not using adapters is for the speed of the autofocus. And specifically, if you're a portrait photographer, that access to the eye autofocus function, which for me is like the best thing about Sony's. So, and I believe you can't use that unless you're using Sony glass. So um, yeah, go for it, treat yourself, um, give it a go. I love all the glass that I've got from Sony. Elise Demi says, I really love your bookshelf shoots. Well, thank you, Elise Demi, I'm glad you do. If you don't know what Elise is talking about, then she's talking about photographs that I've taken in this room by my bookcase. So the interesting thing about this room and these bookcase shoots is that I never really planned to do them. So this is the room that models come and they leave their bags and they get changed in when um, they're doing photo shoots with me because my studio is next door. But about three years ago, maybe a little bit longer, I shot a model called Becca and she was having a cup of tea in here during a break and I photographed her having the cup of tea and it was a cool photo and people seemed to like it. And then since then I thought, oh, I'm gonna shoot some more photos in here. 
where it's got to the point now where this room is almost like my signature style like people just know it's me straight away as soon as they see it and um, I take a lot of shots in here and models ask me a lot to be shot in here and that's cool like I'm glad that people like the shots in here they definitely get the most Instagram engagement out of nearly everything that I post um, but I've been shooting here for a while now I'm a little bit bored of it um, so will I still be shooting here in a year's time probably not mate. I mean we'll see um, but I'm very glad that people seem to like the shots that I've taken in here. HG Sharman asks me a really good question. She says, what advice would you have for a new model when working with new photographers? So, new models, new photographers. The first thing I would say is that just accept the fact that it's going to be a little bit awkward. Like, you don't know what you're doing. The photographer doesn't know what he or she is doing. Um, and you're not going to get the world's best images but take it for what it is it's going to be a learning experience go and have fun don't walk in there trying to act like Billy Big Bollocks like you know everything if you don't go in there be honest with each other about the level that you're at and try your best to collaborate to get the best possible images and just have fun with it because if you're there and it's all awkward and weird I mean it's not worth doing um, the only other bit of advice I'd give to um, new models or just models in general when working with new photographers is be careful I don't want to scare you like in general the vast majority of people working in this industry are okay but you do hear horror stories so it's worth you know being a little bit careful best bit of advice I can give with regards to that is if the photographer has shot with other models before that you can see on his Instagram page for example message those models and ask them like like privately what that photographer was like um, because then you're going to get the lowdown and you're really going to understand um, if it feels awkward or it feels weird just walk away it's not worth it and another top tip which you know which goes for all models regardless whether you're new or not is put the effort into um, figuring out what you're going to do on the photo shoot in advance so build the mood boards and get an idea of what you're going to do and then also um, make sure you figure out what you're not going to do as well so even though I'm established as a photographer and I work with established models I still always have that kind of semi awkward chat with models in advance of the photo shoot about what they want to do um, whether that's like underwear, employee topless, topless or nude photography I feel like if you establish those boundaries in advance and you don't go past them that's a lot better because if you're on the day it's you know it's awkward and you know, no one wants to push anything so just have a clear understanding of what you're going to do in advance um, go out there and just have fun with it like having fun with it is, is the, the number one bit of advice I can give you um, if you're on a shoot and you're not having fun then it's going to come across in the pictures and it's going to look awful so relax have a good time and hopefully you know, you'll get some good stuff um, someone asks me I've lost the name I've never modeled before and I absolutely love your work where do you take bookings well thank you I'm glad you love my work and it's pretty simple just DM me on Instagram or go to Bartley.photo um, which is my website and hit up the contact form and I'll be able to tell you about prices and rates and details and all that kind of stuff Celeste Birdsall asks what would it take for me to be deemed to be worthy to be in front of your camera so I'm going to rephrase that question into what do I look for in models and it's always a hard question because there is no simple answer to that. I can just kind of tell if it's someone I want to shoot, usually within like five seconds of dropping on their Instagram page. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the face, like is your are your features interesting, like your face is like the most important thing to me when it comes to modelling and it's also the thing that you can't change so you just have it or you don't no matter how hard you train which is difficult to hear. We live in a world where like, we've grown up being told if we work really hard we can achieve anything, but at the end of the day with modelling that's really not true. Like, you know, if, if you, you can find little bits and bobs of jobs, but if you want to be like a proper commercial model, there's, there's a certain kind of aesthetic and you have it or you don't, no matter how hard you train. Um, so after I've looked at the face, I look at basically like styling, so that's kind of like your hair, your makeup, what you wear, and just your, your personal kind of like swagger, like the kind of vibes that you give off. Sometimes I see models who aren't that like excellent fundamentally in terms of their facial structure, but they have like a really cool vibe to them that makes me want to shoot them, so that's important. And then after that I'm looking at your portfolio, um, the previous work you've done, the quality of that work, if you've worked with other photographers that I know, um, that helps. And then I'm also kind of checking out through the grapevine because you know, photographers talk, you know, if you're reliable, if you're a nightmare to work with, etc, etc. But um, modeling's not nice, you know, like it's, it's, it's I don't, sometimes I don't even like even being involved with it because it's just purely based on something you can't control, like did you win the genetic lottery or not? So, you know, 
try not to beat yourself up too much. I couldn't model. I'm from five foot seven, the chunky boy. Do you know what I mean? Like no one's gonna hire me to be a model either. But um, yeah, um, it's, it, it is for some people and it isn't for others. And it's pretty much luck whether it's for you or not. So the next question comes from Kevin Todd Four, and he asks me what are my top two lenses. So first off, I've mentioned it already: the 55 mm 1.8 amazing by far my favorite lens for second place it's a bit of a toss-up between this which is the sony fe 1.8 85 millimeter it's an 85 millimeter prime lens i mean you know what it is it's great it's a good focal length it's a little bit awkward sometimes it's you know it's not it's either like too zoomed in or not zoomed in enough but it's fine it's a good portrait lens i like it and that goes up against the lens i'm actually using to film this video which is the sony 16 to 35 f4 I only bought this lens a couple of weeks ago because I wanted to get into landscape and urban photography. And when I bought it, I thought that's all I'd use it for, but I've been blown away with it. I've been using it on literally every job I've had since. For events, it's amazing, obviously, because you can get those wide angle shots. I mean, I shot a wedding the other day and I had it on a monopod hovering over the dance floor. It was really good to get those like epic wide shots. Um, I'm using it for film, great for film. And I even used it on a portrait, a fashion portrait shoot the other day, which I never thought I would do with the lens when I bought it. Um, just because I wanted to get that, you know, that wider focal length. And then I was doing a scene, um, doing a shot with the model lying on the bed. And it allowed me to like stand over her. And, you know, and having the zoom was really useful. Like I often, I nearly always use primes, but having that zoom allowed me to get that extra um, width without actually having to move myself away from the subject. So really great lens. So number one is the 55 millimeter 1.8. And then number two would be a toss up between those two, but if I had to give it to one, I think I'd give it to the 16 to 35, just because its versatility is absolutely um, superb. Photos by JRD, great photographer, Manchester photographer, you should check him out, asks, do you retouch your images? Um, like most photographers, the answer is yes, but very, very minor retouching. I would say that 90% of my photos are retouched within less than a minute. I literally get them in Lightroom, drop on a preset that I've made recently, adjust exposure, highlights, blacks maybe, and then I will, um, if there's any like, big spots, I'll take the spots off the skin. And that's pretty much it really. Like. I don't do any like airbrushing or changing model shape. I think there's a kind of conception within um, within the public that like all photography is fake. And I think for the most part, especially for me, it's not like what you see is what you get. Like some photographers will spend two to three hours editing one image. Like no, like I have no interest in doing that. As far as I'm concerned, like if you're spending three hours editing an image, it basically turns more into digital art than it does into photography. And I've got no interest in that whatsoever. So. Yes, I retouch my images, but the amount of retouching I do is extremely minimal. And Claw Portraits asks me, how much do you effing love smoke bombs? And I effing hate smoke bombs. And let me explain to you why that is. So as a photographer, I'm a minimalist. So even though you'll see things in the backgrounds of my shots, like this room, for example, like to me, that is to set like the ambiance of a photograph, to set a kind of like feeling of the photograph. I don't really want you looking at it. Like the model is the prime focal point of what I'm working on in a photograph. And if you look at a lot of my work as well, what the models are wearing is quite minimal. Like I like plain, simple outfits because I like the focus to be on the model and the model's face, really. Um, and smoke bombs to me kind of like really sum up the kind of thing that beginners and amateurs, including myself, used to do, which is just doing too much shit on a photograph. Like, if you look at beginner's photography, the reason it's poor in general is because they've done too much. Like, the models dressed in crazy clothing with crazy makeup, and they're against a graffitied wall with loads of colour, and then they edit it and add loads of saturation, and it's just busy, 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 busy. And smoke bombs are like the key busyness, you know what I mean? You're waving smoke around your shot, it's really distracting. Like, I just don't like it. I don't like distracting. If you're doing portrait photography, to me, like I like to I want the focus to be on the model, not on all the stuff that's happening around her. And I think a lot of times as well, it's like beginners and amateurs who are using these smoke bombs and uh they're the least well equipped to do that in like a subtle, tasteful way. A lot of times it's just like as big as possible. Um, and it's just not for me. I feel like if you're new, concentrate on like the basics, you know, just get a model, stand her against a white wall and just kind of figure out like composition and, and framing and all that. And then later on, add these like extra elements to your photographs. But yeah, smoke bombs aren't for me. If someone pulls out a smoke bomb, I'll, I'm off like, I want nothing to do with it. Right, so that is the end of the Q&A. I hope I didn't come across as a massive bell end. I hope it was somewhat useful. Um, if you want me to do another one of these or you have any questions, then drop me a message on Instagram or comment in the comment box. Um, 
if you have any ideas for future videos I could do, then do the same, you know. Um, so yeah, um, is this where I say like, like, comment and subscribe? Like, smash that like button, smash that like button. <laughs> no, no, I can't, I, I can't do that. Um, right, so thanks for watching. I don't know how to uh, end a video, so um, I'm just going to be awkward. Um, cheers, thanks, bye, cheers, thanks. Nice one, cheers. <clears throat>